So when we talked about invades, uh, we claim that say we are partner in national building, but partner in the sense not by contributing huge taxes in the form of uh, income tax or GSTs, but uh, in terms of uh, creating road infrastructures and highways uh, for the nation. So that's how we we partner uh, for the national building. So so when we talk about invades, uh, SEBI recognizes them as debt and hybrid instruments. The debt department deals with us. But when it comes to listing, they are treated as equities. So NSC treats us as an equity, not as a debenture or any, any debt. So as uh, our CMT has mentioned that uh, these invites are uh, just uh, influencers, aggregators, and we are like mutual funds, communal ownership, and uh, we are owning the capital and manpower intensive projects. So we look at the completed projects only. I mean, uh, uh, SEBI invite regulation restricts acquiring the under construction projects, which is maximum up to 20%. 80% needs to be completed assets. So, so this uh, has been covered by uh, Nitan sir. Now we, we look at uh, in-bit assets, there is a power of scalability. You know, any business model we discuss, we say that, uh, I mean, whether it is scalable business or not. So certainly it is a hugely scalable business and uh, the whole is greater than the sum total of its parts. So when invite is created by owning the assets under it, then there is a spirit inside the, the institution which is created. So that's how, you know, uh, what he explained that we get the collective strength of getting the bargain with the banks, you know, better pricing, uh, we get the better ratings also. So that's how it helps us. Who can invest in all the assets you covered in uh, your presentation? So I would be coming, I mean, I, I would address this uh, regulatory uh, regime so these invites are highly regulated instruments where it is uh, regulated by SEBI regulation. Of course, LODR is not applicable. Listing obligation and disclosure requirement is not applicable to invites, but SEBI invite regulation requires uh, disclosures and all. So, so I mean, this is the, B where, I mean, LODR explanation is there. Uh, there are trustees, then in, independent directors, auditors, valuers, so valuations uh, do uh, hugely applies for invites. Uh, once in a year, minimum or uh, uh, quarter, I mean, uh, twice in a year sort of uh, valuation has to be done. Then there are regulatory authorities like for roads and highways, NHI is there, uh, Ministry of Road and uh, Transport, highways is there more, consisting authorities. Then independent engineers are there to look after the work done by uh, the consciousness. Uh, team leaders are there, project directors, then lenders, independent engineers also visit us and uh, see our assets and project management consultants are also there. So this is hugely regulated structure, which allows no room for uh, making any either. You know, these are like watertight uh, 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 instruments, highly regulated and uh, controlled. Now I would, uh, types of in which I'm sure all the informed uh, investors are aware. So publicly offered uh, in listed in bids privately and the privately unlisted also. So these are the norms which you had already explained. So, I mean, in bids which are uh, registered so far, so uh, integrity in, in transmission, IRB in toll roadways, recently we have listed, Oriental is there, uh, India Infrastructure Trust is there, uh, Tower Infrastructure Trust of uh, Reliance is there, India, uh, the, I mean, Indian Infra Trust is there, Digital fiber is also there. Who can invest? Uh, uh, so, as is you explained, that 80% uh, should be maximum, I mean, uh, should be in completed and revenue generating asset. 20% should be restricted to under construction projects. Now, coming to taxes, so we say that, sir, income is always made at the expense of somebody else. So, if I am making some money, it is somebody else's expenditure. And similarly, if I am spending something, it is somebody else's expenditure. So in that case, it should be a zero sum game. But in income tax, it does not happen because we save and invest also. To the extent I have saved money, I have to pay taxes, income tax I'm talking. So any saving and investment are tax taxed. But in which infrastructure uh, investment trust, these are like tax havens. So what government of the day has done in 2015, that any income received by uh, invite would be treated as a pass through under section 23 fc and uh, in uh, i mean income would be in the form of largely interest dividend and return of capital so return of capital anyway is not taxable 
and in case of interest earned by it, it it would be simply passing it on to the unit holders, and unit holders would be paying the tax. So that uh, the rule that my income is somebody else's expenses does not apply here, and it gets the tax haven. So when it comes to taxability of dividend, so we have like two layer structure. We have uh, under input there are three old cores and there are twenty four SPVs. So what happens? I mean, when SPVs are declaring dividend, it would be coming to hold cores. Those are again uh, limited companies, private limited companies, and then it would be going to invit. So dividend issued by hold core is also exempt under section eighty M, hundred percent. And then uh, when hold cores are distributing it to invit, again it is exempt under section ten twenty three AFC. And uh, when unit holders are receiving this, of course it is taxable uh, as per applicable rates. When it comes to interest, so how does an invit earn, earn interest? It would be uh, sourcing money at cheaper rate of interest and would be lending it to SPVs with keeping by keeping its a little margin. So whatever margin it is making, that is tax exempt because unit holders would be paying in tax on that. So that is beauty of the invit structure. And the return of capital anyway, which comes in the form of return of uh, uh, NCDs if it has been placed or return of the Money uh, which has been lent or uh, kept as a capital, uh, equity capital, that is also not taxable. Now, what happens is when we convert our invit, I mean, uh, a sponsor converts his assets in SPV equity into invit, that is exempted under uh, under section forty seven uh, seventeen. So, so that's it is not considered as a transfer. Now, there is a definition of SPV which is given under section ten twenty three FC. So it says that all those assets which are controlled by the invit, then there would not be any tax on uh, uh, on the inflows of income from such entities. So even TDS is not applicable when money is flowing from uh, SPV assets to hold cores and to invits. And uh, of course, when the invit is distributing uh, uh, interest, then it attacks TDS. But on dividend, there would not be any tax. Subject to that, say SPV companies where the income has originated, they have not taken benefit of low lower tax regime under Section One Fifteen BAB. But if SPV has opted for lower tax benefit, then dividend income would be taxable in the hands of recipients, the unit holders. But of course, up to in the level, it would not be taxable. So that's the advantage. Now, what happens is when a sponsor converts his equity into units. What about the capital gain tax? So, Section Forty Seven Seventeen specifically exempts this. Even Section One Fifteen BAB exempts the the book profits also. Whatever, because as per India, as we have to recognize uh, the all I mean all the assets on fair value. So there would be a certain gain to a sponsors. So sponsors books would also be showing on fair value. In which in which assets would be recorded on fair value. And uh, whatever gain is accrued, that would be treated as a capital receipt. It would not attract any tax. Now, when there is a capital return, so capital return up to the face value of the assets would not attract the tax. But as and when in which units are sold, that time it would be attracting tax because clarification uh, to section forty uh, nine uh, FC, uh, it says that uh, the cost of acquisition of such units would be treated as the cost of acquisition. By the original holder, which was the equity holder, the sponsor and the uh, fellow holders. So that's how the structure is. Now, interestingly, if someone wants to transfer the asset itself uh, without converting into equity, I mean the sale, I mean purchase of asset for consideration otherwise than equity, then it would be attracting tax because Section forty seven seventeen exempts only those transfers which are uh, conversion of equity into units, not otherwise. so that is one aspect and uh, recently we have come out uh, with our uh, offer for sale we have filed uh, private placement uh, i mean placement memorandum and uh, there is a tax benefit certificate we have nicely published so that is by our statutory auditors mm chitle very renowned firm so that is very informative a uh, very exhaustive statement of tax benefits one can if you know there's a scholarly article sort of one can go through that also If there are certain queries, some would uh, like to know. Uh, one can reach out to me personally. If there are questions, certainly they can be addressed within the limited time available in this forum. So, 
I hope I'm not touching much on uh, international taxation. Uh, I'm sure uh, they are best guided by the consultants. So uh, thank you.